Page 45. Today, millions of people, young and old, go into foreign countries every year on business or for pleasure. One can see babies in baskets being taken about by air every day. That is a quicker way to get about than on one's mother's back. Here is a woman who is carrying her baby on her back. She carries the child with her wherever she goes. In the last hundred years, people have learned to go over land and sea through the air as almost all birds and many insects can. People are carried through the air in airplanes. Page 46. Some birds have eyes which can see great distances, and they have good hearing. Some of them can hear sounds which we cannot hear, but people have made themselves new ears and new eyes. Today, one can talk with a person at the other side of the earth by telephone. Through the radio, one can hear sounds which come through space from thousands of miles away. One can see through a telescope the mountains on the moon, and through a microscope, thousands of living things in a drop of water. Page 47. Hundreds of millions of people today can see and hear on television and the radio important statements by public people, statements which in earlier times could have been heard by few. It is a question whether, at any time in history, one has been able to be heard by millions of people at the same time. Without the telephone, television, and the radio, A person can only be heard as far as the voice can carry. New instruments are making our homes less private and public men and women more public. No one knows what will come of this. One of the worst effects is that singers who are no singers and noisemakers of every sort can be heard in too many places. Page 48. Birds and many insects have wings. It is their wings which take them up into the air. The wings of birds have long feathers on them. Their bones and the stems of their wing feathers are hollow. This keeps them light. Here is a bee. Here is a beetle. Here is a fly. And here is a butterfly. Bees, beetles, and flies are insects. There are many different sorts of insects. Page 49. People have been attempting for thousands of years to make wings that will let them fly like the birds. Here is a picture of the first flying machine to take men into the sky, made in 1903. It did not fly very fast or very far. Now airplanes can fly farther and faster than the fastest bird and can carry heavy weights through the air. People can go faster than sound in the newest planes. Page 50. We can see why distances between people are not so important now as they were. They may be bridged in so many ways. What is a bridge? Here is a wide river with a bridge over it. The bridge is more than a mile long and is made of steel. It can carry very heavy weights. It is so strong that not only automobiles, but trains go across it. It is so high that great ships go under it. Language is a bridge between minds, a bridge so strong that trains of thought can go across. Language can bridge distances. Page 51. Language can bridge time as well as space. Ideas can go from mind to mind across the language bridge, and they can come from the past to the present. We can read what people before us wrote and keep their books for others to read in the future. Here are some of the great books of all time. Books are the most important records we have of people's thoughts and feelings, their ideas and desires. Page 52. All people have more in common with all others on earth than most of them know. What do the words in common mean? What is their meaning? What do the people in this family have in common? They have their family name in common. They are the Smiths 
or the Wangs. They have a house in common. It is their home. The husband and wife have their children in common. In some parts of the world, a man may have a number of wives. In other parts, a woman may have a number of husbands. In these countries, the wives have their husband in common, or the husbands have their wife in common. People of the same country have that country in common. It is their country. Every country has a flag. What is the flag of your country? Page 53. People who talk the same language have that language in common. It is their language, the language of each and all of them. They have the ideas and feelings about things which that language carries. People who do not talk a language do not know what those who use it are saying. They do not know what its words can mean. They have less in common with those who talk it than those people who have with one another. Sometimes, as in India, in one country under one flag, people talk many languages. They have their country and their flag in common, but some of them have to learn the language of others if they are to have a language in common. Page 54. Talking with someone is saying things to him. Hearing what he says and taking in his meaning. People can talk together only when they have a language in common. When you were very young, your parents talked to you, and after a time you saw what they meant and learned to talk to them. A baby's first words are commonly names for its parents. Some children learn to talk earlier than others. We go on learning our language all our lives. Some people talk more than they think, and some people think more than they talk. Most of our thinking is done through language. Page 55. There are more than 6 billion people on the earth and about 2,500 languages. Of these languages, only about 12 are used by more than 50 million people. Here are the names of some languages. Which have very wide use Chinese, Mandarin and Cantonese, English, French, German, Hindi, Japanese, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese, Arabic, and Bengali. All these languages have more people talking them today than ever before. Two hundred years ago, there were only about 20 million people who talked English, for example. Now there are more than 500 million, and there may be many, many more. Page 56. More people will learn more languages as better ways of teaching them are worked out. This book, English Through Pictures 3, is itself part of an attempt to teach English better. We need better books to learn from. And better recordings of good voices to teach us how to listen to the sentences of a language and say them. Recordings of sounds are made on CDs, discs, and on tapes. Page 57. We need good pictures to teach us meanings in the new language, and good motion pictures to help many more people to learn languages quickly and well. The learners will then be able to work in groups with the help of teachers or by themselves using books, records, radio, CDs, sound motion pictures, and television. A teacher can help a learner to learn. Reading and writing can help us to think. Page 58. Writing is a very much newer invention than talking. Nobody knows when people first began to talk. But they did not begin to write, so far as we know, until seven or eight thousand years ago. In Egypt, Mesopotamia, and China, and later in Palestine and Greece, people began to make marks and pictures with sticks and sharp stones from which others, or they themselves later, could see what they had thought. Page 59. These early records were the beginning of writing. The first writing was picture writing. 
Here are some early Chinese picture words. Can you see what they represent? Later, Chinese writing is less like pictures than the earlier writing was, but we can see the pictures in some of its words. For example, here are some Egyptian words in picture writing. Page 60. In picture writing, each picture represents a word. You need a different picture or mark for each word. In present day Chinese writing, most of the marks are not pictures of anything, and a reader has to learn how the Chinese write about 2,000 of these words before being able to read a newspaper. With some of these marks, you may be able to see what the idea is. For example, The sun and moon. Its meaning is bright and open. A man and two marks. One of the meanings is humanity. Learning to read Chinese is much harder than learning to read English. But in word writing like Chinese, the same marks can be read as having the same meaning in different languages. For example, in Mandarin, in Cantonese, and in Japanese. Page 61. In time, some people discovered how to represent the sounds in words by marks. In any language, there are only a small number of different sounds. By writing down marks to represent sounds, not ideas, people can spell any of the words in a language with only a small number of marks. Every written language today has its spelling system. The hardest languages to spell are those in which, as with English, many of the letters may represent more than one sound. Here is the complete Roman alphabet in which English and many other languages are written. Something written in English has a meaning only if it is read as English, because the letters in English represent English sounds. What is written in Italian must be read as Italian. Page 62. Here is the name of the book, English Through Pictures, written in a number of different languages. The names of the languages are given in English. Page 63. Here are the 26 letters used in English with the English names for them spelled out after them. Some of these letters are used not for one sound only. But for any of two or three or more different sounds, the letter A may have the sound of a、ah、in bag, part, again, say, was, any, or fall. The letter E may have the sound of E in bell, week, older, earth, or here. Or it may have no sound, but only an effect upon other sounds which come before it. The A and the G in bag have different sounds from the A and the G in age, for example. Reading English is not as hard as reading Chinese, but it is harder than reading a language in which each letter has only one sound. Page 64. Are some of the sounds used in one language very unlike any of those used in another? Yes. You may have felt in learning English that some of the sounds it uses are strange. But if you do not have a well trained ear, you will not hear English words as they are heard by an Englishman or an American. You will hear the nearest sounds in your mother language. A good way of learning to make the sounds of a new language is to use recordings, which have spaces after each sentence, giving you time to say what you have heard before the next sentence comes. Page 65. There are machines which will play back to you again and again, one after the other, the sounds you have made and the sounds you were attempting to make. When you hear what you were doing wrong, you can try to do better next time. For most children, new sounds are easy to make when they hear them, and children seem to hear new sounds better and more easily than grown ups do. If a family goes to China or France or Finland, 
to take three countries whose languages are very unlike one another. The children will learn to talk Chinese or French or Finnish much more quickly than their parents will. Page sixty-six. Why is this? Why is it easy for young children to learn languages? Part of the answer is that children have so many needs. They need to be helped by grown-ups at every turn. They have to make their needs known, and they are always watching the effect of what they say and trying new ways of getting what they want. Children are learning new things all the time. Page sixty-seven. Another part of the answer is that children are not, as older people sometimes are, fixed in their ways of living. When they are taken from one country to another, they change easily from one language to another, from one bed to another, from one food to another. Older people are more fixed in their ways. They have been hearing and talking one language for a long time. Their ways of hearing and making sounds and of putting words together are like the rails a train goes on. They have been up and down their lines of talk and thought too many times to change them easily. Children are freer in their ways. They are more like an airplane, or better, like a bird. They are free to go in any direction they want. They are free to hear sounds as they are and make them as they hear them. They are free to put new words together in new ways and talking a new language. Page sixty-eight. The more languages you hear and get to know, the more you will see how any language is made up of a small number of sounds put together in different ways. For example, in English, light and right are different words, with only one sound in them different. The same is true of long. And wrong. If a learner does not hear these different sounds as different, he may not get the meaning of what is said to him. Page sixty-nine. There are many ways of helping a learner into a language, but not enough people know them. Most people learn their mother language without being able to give any account at all of how it works. They learn to talk as they learn to walk. Without any idea of how they do it, people who learn to use a language well do so through talking with others who use it well, through reading good writers, and through watching the effects on others of what they say and how they say it. The world needs more people who can use language well. Language is as necessary to our minds as the air we breathe is to our bodies. Page seventy. Everybody needs air. We breathe in air from outside our bodies in every breath. When you put your face under water, you cannot keep it there long. Swimmers can't swim under water very long. They need air. Good swimmers may swim with their faces in the water. If so, they keep turning their heads to take a breath through their mouths. Swimmers do not take in air through their noses under the water. Because water would get in through the nose with the air, and go to the lungs. With water in the lungs, a person can't go on living. Page seventy-one. Here is a picture of a man's lungs. They are soft like sponges with thousands of little pipes going through them. The pipes keep branching like the branches of a tree, so that they go through every part of each lung. Our lungs are in the upper part of our chest. We have two of them. The air we breathe goes right into every part of the lungs through these branching pipes. They take it to the blood, which is moving all the time through the lungs and round to every part of our bodies. The blood makes a journey round the body and back to the lungs in a very short time. Page seventy-two. What is blood? It is the red liquid which comes out of your finger when you cut it. There are about thirteen pints of blood in a person's body. We can give a pint of blood at a time to a blood bank for the use of others who may need it. A healthy body makes up the pint of blood quickly. 
What does our blood do for us? It takes food to all parts of our bodies and takes waste away from them. All the parts of our bodies are made up of cells. These cells, which are very small, all need food all the time. Page 73. Here are some cells, thousands of times the size they are in the body. Each different sort of cell has its own work to do, different from the work other sorts of cells do. No one had seen cells before the invention of the microscope and its development in the 16th and 17th centuries. Before then, no one could make pictures of cells because no one could see them. Page 74. Cells are like little flames. A flame needs food. We get a quick flame for a fire or a cigarette by lighting a match or using a lighter. The flame of the match burns the match, and the flame of the lighter burns the liquid in the lighter, if there is air for them to burn in. All fires burn something. What they burn is their fuel. Fuel is food for fire. Page 75. The blood is like a stream. The cells take what they need, their fuel, out of the bloodstream. As plants and fishes take their food out of the water, the bloodstream carries food and the oxygen, which it has taken up in our lungs, to all the cells in the body. Old cells die and give place to new cells in the body, as plants and fish and other living things in the world about us die and give place to others. Three million of your red blood cells die every second, and other cells take their place. The red cell population of your body changes completely in about three months. Page 76. What makes the blood go on moving round the body in a stream? The heart sends it round. The heart is between the lungs. A person's heart is the size of his shut hand. The heart is a pump. If you put your hand under water like this, And keep letting a little water into it and sending it out again, you are pumping the water. The heart pumps blood in a way a little like this. Page 77. The heart has four rooms in it with doors, valves, between them. It pumps blood in and out through these doors by changing the size of the rooms so that the doors open and shut. It can do this because it is made of muscle. The heart keeps a stream of blood going all round the body and back again to itself. The pipes which take blood from the heart are named arteries. The pipes through which it comes back to the heart are named veins. Page 78. A solid line represents an artery, and a broken line, a vein. Page 79. The first man to discover that the blood goes to all parts of the body, out through the valves of the heart, through one system of pipes and back again, through another, was the 17th century doctor, William Harvey. The journey of all our blood all round the body is the circulation of the blood. As you see in the picture opposite, The branches of the arteries are like the branches of a tree, which get smaller and smaller the farther they are from the roots. The small branches go to all parts of the body. They go to the ends of your fingers and toes, to all the muscles, those parts by which you move your arms and legs and head and other parts of the body. Page 80. Everywhere the bloodstream does two things. Supplies the cells with food and oxygen and takes away waste. It is as if the blood kept the little fires in the cells burning and took away the ashes. The fuel for the fires in the cells is given us by the food we eat. It cannot burn without oxygen. This gas is as necessary to all living things as it is necessary to the burning of fires made of wood or coal. 
Burning is the change which takes place when oxygen and fuel unite. Coal, wood, and other fuels, cooking gas, for example, burn by taking oxygen from the air. Page eighty-one. When you see someone opening a window in a room full of people, you know that is to let in air from outside. As good air comes in through the window, bad used air. With more carbon dioxide and water in it, and less oxygen, goes out. We say good air is fresh air. Fresh air is clean and good to breathe, and has enough oxygen in it for our needs. Page eighty-two. These boys are outside in the fresh air, breathing deeply while their teacher is saying, "In, out, for every breath which they take." If you could watch them, you would see their chest becoming first larger, then smaller in size, as their lungs breathe air in and out. Breathing goes on when we are awake, and when we are sleeping. Most of the time, we are not conscious of our breathing. The motion of our lungs as we breathe is automatic; it goes on by itself. The lungs taking fresh air in. And letting used air out about eighteen times a minute. This is the common rate of breathing. We become conscious of our breathing if anything shuts the air off from us, so that we do not get enough oxygen for our needs. Page eighty-three. Keeping your mouth shut, take your nose between your thumb and one finger, so that you shut the air out and shut your breath in. How long can you hold your breath? You will be wise if you do not try to hold it more than a minute. If oxygen is kept from a person for long, he will become unconscious. When people become unconscious through getting water or smoke in their lungs, it is very important to start them breathing again. This is done by turning them face down, putting something between their teeth to keep their mouths open. And then working their lungs to start them breathing. Page eighty-four. The higher up we go, the less is the pressure of the air, because the weight of the air above us is less. As the pressure becomes less, air gets thinner. The amount of oxygen we get in one breath becomes less. We must take in more air to get the same amount of oxygen. The instrument we use to measure the pressure of the air is the barometer. Page eighty-five. Men have been able to get to the top of the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. They had to use oxygen when they got up high. They had to keep control over the amount of oxygen they used. They could get no more supplies from those below. This man, who is going up a high mountain. Is using a supply of oxygen, which is stored in those cans he is carrying on his back. By opening and shutting a valve, he controls the amount of oxygen he breathes in. The gas has been pumped into the small space inside the cans. It is under pressure in there, and comes out when the valve is opened.